just here. here. I'm just starting the. Yeah. Here's our initial. Here's blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. We're talking before the show starts. <laughs> oh, this is the, we're manufacturing like we've been having a conversation. <laughs> Hey, remember the thing we were just talking about? (laughs) Oh, that was... Wrecked him, tenure killed him. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Autopod Decepticast. This is your minute-by-minute breakdown of the 1986 animated Transformers movie. This is your host, Aaron, along with my co-hosts. I am Ryan. I'm Caleb. And, and uh, this... <laughs> sorry, I interrupted hello. your intro yeah. just... right off the no, I, I, I didn't have to say hello. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> fuck yeah, you, the, Caleb. Yeah, just like... Get the fuck out of here. Oh, it's going to be like this? You know... Is this what I have to look forward to? <laughs> How many minutes long is this movie? <laughs> 90. We have 90 so episodes. I've, I've got so 90 of these of beginning. Uh, when you're coming around, you know that in an intro, you're not allowed to ad lib. <laughs> you can't say hello. So, we talked about this. <laughs> uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, this episode, if you're unfamiliar with, uh, well, first let me re familiarize you with the premise of the show. We're going to take. The 1986 Autobot and Decepticon opus. Transformers, I believe Transformers. it's called. We're going to take the 1986 Transformers movie. We're going to break it down minute by minute. And every episode of this program is going to cover one minute of showtime. So we're dissecting. We are uh, breaking it down. Other oh, synonyms. So, And it's uh, from the point where the, orig- like the first uh, t- uh, card comes up of the production company logo. From- which would be this episode. Yeah, I would as- I would assume that everyone has hopefully watched at least the first minute <laughs> yeah. of this movie. And, and, it, and the, like the end of this minute is the robot, what I think of as a shopping mall, because it has an escalator. <laughs> so <laughs> and there's strange. kids just yeah. having a good time. Uh, so yeah, from the DEG logo to, uh, we'll say the Lithonian uh, shopping mall. So that, would make, that might be like we have a title. That I actually had to look up. I did not know the name of this planet. Which, oh, that has was, a name? Yeah, Lith- I actually wrote it down. Lithone, I guess is how you pronounce it. it was, well, even Caleb's learning, and if Caleb yeah. can learn, then the audience. Which I it's learn. not in the movie, so do they name it in the yeah, series? They do. Late? I think they, they name it in the movie. They? Oh, yeah. maybe they, because oh. the guy is the last surviving member. I'm of the, the last uh, survivor of Lethal. Okay, well, oh, okay. so uh, whether that, I don't know, I can't remember if that's Cranix or Arbalis, but uh, so the very beginning of this uh, movie, we see the DEG and Marvel Sunbow logo. And the DEG logo stands for the De Laurentiis Entertainment Group. Um, Is that Dino De Laurentiis? uh, Yes, that would be. An Ah. Italian producer. Um, This is one of the first... When you do that, it actually... You can hear it. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. (laughs) Uh, That's when you're supposed to be like, Fuck you, Caleb! Get the fuck out of here! Uh, This is one of the first five movies that this production company made, actually. Um... Uh, but who is Dino De Laurentiis, Italian producer? He produced such movies as uh, Blue Velvet. Oh, David that's Lynch. a cheerful movie. Uh, uh, Evil Dead Two. Nice. Uh, with uh, our friend uh, Sam Raimi and uh, Bruce Campbell. Uh, Manhunter. Have you guys seen that or are familiar with it at all? It's technically the first Hannibal Lecter film. Ah. Um, but wait, my favorite movie, after, other than Transformers, the movie on the the list of uh, production is Bill and Ted's Excellent oh. Adventure. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Do you guys? They, that's the only movies they did. No, there's probably like oh, those 30. are some of his oh, those notable are the ones. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know? Those are the ones I knew. I love that logo. When I see it, it comes With up. It's like the most seventies logo. It's like it. it it's, the it's, only way it could be more seventies is if it were like just a mustache. It's great. It's so <laughs> awesome. All right, uh, moving on. So <laughs> the next thing that appears is the Marvel and uh, Sunbow production uh, logos. Uh, what do you guys know about these? Well, which is this, did this, is this Marvel Productions, did this become Marvel Studios, or is it a, do we know? Well, it seems like somebody should have done research on that. <laughs> no, I'm before, just now thinking before, of it. This, uh, is where I, this is where I look on my phone and read, and just and read stuff from Wikipedia to the people that are listening, right? 
No need to Wikipedia, people. <laughs> we have Wikipedia at our fingertips, and uh, all I know is about Sunbow. That's a ama- that was the production studio that produced many, many Transformers cartoons and GI Joe cartoons and uh, others. Um, and I, I mean, I believe they started off as essentially an advertising arm of uh, Hasbro and did the original commercials, and as as such, kind of. Obtained the role of uh, owning the animation side of it. I see me to ball. <laughs> <laughs> so are we glossing over Marvel Productions? Or? I don't know anything about it. We're going to have to comment on it later. Okay. What is it, what, what, tell me something about Listener, it. if you are a, an expert in uh, Marvel Productions and their history, feel free to write in and we'll, get, we'll credit you uh, with information. The one thing I would say about it is... Uh, they existed and then they quit existing. <laughs> they had a lifespan. I think they, I don't think it evolved I, into Marvel oh, so pictures. Basically, as we know everything today. everything's on. This is all owned by Disney now. We'll just say that. Okay. Uh, great information. Okay. Yep. So <laughs> you're welcome. So uh, after the logos disperse, we kind of have this moment of uh, interstellar clouds parting. Ooh. Now, okay, can you play this music like? I mean, we'll drop it in later, but the music that plays here, I want to sh- I want to play something for you guys in a second after. Like, the music that plays whenever Unicron flies by the sun and goes up to the lith- lithone planet. The composer that did this, um, yeah, this. Okay. That's enough. So that, like, I want you to listen to, like, this. This is another thing. Is this Rocky? It's Rocky too. I'm so excited about these fights. I make sure. I'm going to be one of the big fighters. This guy had a style. So that was, was the same was the, the same composer. Yeah. And that's by the way, that's that's when uh the, the, the dumb robots coming into the room and Polly's looking at it like Yeah. Well, it's all it's like the strangest addition to a movie ever. Like, oh let's we're having a robot that I'm assuming for no reason. <laughs> not that this podcast is about Rocky, but I'm assuming that apparently was, that robot like, was there to illustrate their how crazy spendy they were. I yeah. mean, everybody yeah. just wanted isn't that the one where he went bankrupt? Yeah, that, that Rocky Five is where he uh, is bankrupt. But okay. you can see he, he was making some poor decisions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, Let's get this. you're watching this and you're like, they're going to make another movie and, and he's going to be destitute. Probably 100 yeah. percent fucked that robot, right? We are all agree that. <laughs> I, and he also sorry. did some the, some movie um, work for Staying Alive. But, like, this guy became known kind of as the Transformers soundtrack guy. Like, this is a quote I found on Wikipedia. Tacola has had enough of a cult following amongst Transformers fans who have warranted the release of several albums of music related to the Transformers movie as follow-ups to the original 1986 soundtrack. Yeah, as somebody who is, um, we talked about our, uh, how connected we are to Transformers as a franchise today, as somebody who is... Of the three of us most connected, and even then I'm only tangentially, but I get on, I see message boards, I'm a lurker, not a not a poster, but people fucking love him. Like, really? he is a god. Uh, maybe even a higher level of god than Stan Bush, but uh, wow. just, like, people love him. He goes to conventions, conventions and does all that shit. And does, he, he, does he play? Does he perform? Um, I think so, yeah. I think they have That's done, like, shows, yeah, at some of these conventions. He and Stan Bush. And I also know, like, the, there's a new-ish uh, Transformers game that came out a while back called Devastation, and he composed the entire soundtrack to it, and it's, like, oh. rockin' synth shit. Oh, so synthesizers. Mm-hmm. I love it. <laughs> it's so awesome. I did not like it that much as a kid because I was never, like, a metal guy. But, I mean, his stuff is good. I mean, it's, like, it's pretty... Like but like it's so it's so just so interesting because like I've never really heard another it's like that breathy stuff that's in there and right. like the ch- and the steam. Sound. I feel like he just copy pasted on that it and maybe really did a couple was little very tweaks, similar. a couple level tweaks on there. Um, but uh, so okay, 
uh, where, well, uh, his, so his, his, so his music, this, his music setting it up is, uh, Unicron is, uh, flying out of a, whatever, a nebula, and he's flying <laughs> towards this Passes planet. a star. Beautiful animation, by the way. That, where, yeah, where, this movie where, is gorgeous. Where that close-up, that close-up of Unicron is, like, that flyby, like, it's, mm-hmm. like, it kind of scrolls. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, I, I'll, one of the things, like, I love all the animation of this movie, and, like, uh, just... Like you were saying in, you know, the prequel uh, we, episode we talked about, like, they were kind of making some of the stuff up on the fly. But, like, the part where, yeah, he flies by the blue star. I mean, that, like, blurry, like, heat-like looking thing. And, and this is skipping ahead, but when Devastator actually destroys one of the gun turrets, it's the same, like, heat wave-like looking thing. It's just, it, the little details like that are so awesome. Like, mm-hmm. And every, the glowing aspects of this movie, it's just so pretty. Would you say that the animation at the front end of this, like... Is you think they went to more trouble up at the front? Up at the front, I'm not saying the and animation later, gets worse. I don't think they were as tired for sure. <laughs> there are parts that are not awesome, but yeah. most overall, I think it looks really great. Uh, but by the so way, it's we a don't binary have, star system. Yeah. But so what I'm trying to figure out is how big do you think Unicron, Unicron is? is? Like he's bigger. He's definitely smaller than this star. Oh, well, yeah. We don't know. Caleb wrote down how big is Unicron. <laughs> Sorry to take your thunder. <laughs> I was so excited. He, uh, we don't know how big the star is, so we don't really have a good well, benchmark point of reference right? here. But go ahead. I just, I was always it, it stuck out to me. Uh, what what do you call the Transformers series post movies? Like Gen Two? No, no, it's, it's just still Gen One. Well, anyway, but yeah. So um, I was noticed that whenever you had Unicron's floating head. It varied in size, like, all the time. Like, right. in some episodes, it seems like it was about the size of... His head was, like, the size of, you know, a bungalow house. Right. And then other times, it was, like, the size of the, size of the moon. And it just, like... Right. It, well, there was no standard size that those guys were consciously deciding. I mean, he can't be that big if we're assuming... Because Galvatron, when he's holding him in his hand, like, he's... But he's holding him in his what, finger. 20, 30 feet tall? True, oh, but he eats a whole goddamn planet, though. Well, that's the thing is, I'm wondering is that how big is Litho? Smaller? Is it like Megatron transforming into his into that gun? Because he like transform and like shrink down right. so you can hold him. But sometimes he doesn't shrink down. Like there's an episode in the the, the series where he attaches to the underside of Starscream, and he's the same size as Starscream. The gun? Yeah. Are there no standards? No, on scale? I mean it's almost like there, they made this to sell toys. Yeah. <laughs> there is a scale, but it's not followed like yeah. very often. All right, well, let's, so let's just how big? How big? I, if anybody has any idea how big Unicron is, please, yeah, please get nerdy free. with it. How big? Do, I think he's the size of. I mean, he's a planet eater. Well, we don't know how. So is Cybertron bigger or smaller than no, Earth? No, no, no. I think Cybertron's smaller than Earth. I think Cybertron's probably, and this is just based on nothing, but except for the fact that, like, whenever they go to Cybertron, the gravity seems nominal. So I'm assuming Mars sized. I always say when they're showing the planet, I don't. I think it's really small. They're, they're, you're showing it. You can see features of buildings on it and stuff. Yeah, that's true. I think it's maybe like the uh, the size of like um, uh, dirt. <laughs> What do you think of the moon? I, I, think, I think smaller than the moon. I smaller than, smaller than the moon. I mean, I I think that when they're here's the thing: if you're going to animate Cybertron, uh, you know they're doing a, a shot, a zoom in on it. You you're not going to you can't see any features. Maybe they're just on big buildings. It. So they're, ha- yeah, they're <laughs> well, super they're just tall just buildings. buildings. Okay. If it no. I don't know. If it were Mars, they have to be big for the robots. If it were Mars sized, you could have really tall buildings because the gravity is a third of what it is on Earth. So they. would Okay, so let's say you. I'm gonna go with Mar. I'm, oh, I'm gonna I, call it. I'm gonna say. I would like to think he is really, really, really big. All right, he's so he's definitely big enough to eat planets, yes. eat moons. Um, so there's a shot that I've got on the screen right now of uh, he's kind of closing in on the planet. He's got his sights on, on the planet. Light on We're seeing the view from inside of Unicron. Oh, there's there's this sort of strange what combination. What the hell is going on in there? There's of organic and mechanical organs of sort. There's pulsing and glowing from inside the entity. The, uh, the inside of Unicron is gross. It's all gross. It's, it's <laughs> like after he eats this planet, surreal. we'll get into that. It's gross. It's super surreal. There's like, I, there's like at least three or four different animation techniques going on in that shot right there. Yeah, I mean, I want to say this looks like it's rotoscoping of some sort. Yeah. The spikes. Um, the, well, the, no, or, like the sort of net, the net uh, mesh sort of effect. Uh, but anyway, he's setting his sights in on. Uh, 
Um, yeah, li- that's a question. Like speaking of, of unicorns, so there are some aspects that look biological. So I'm like, can mm-hmm. he eat bi- other planets? Like Galactus, can he eat biological planets? Or they? But oh, this is something you asked me before. Is and Lithon, I can only assume is supposed to be an analog for Cybertron. You asked if Cybertron had rocky formations on it, or if it was just all metal. But if you look right here, you can see You're and right. I, that there's, I mean, I guess that's even magma down there, yeah. but like there, it's metal over top of oh, rocks. Oh yeah, so he's eating, he's eating non-metal. He's chowing yeah. down on whatever. And, and that was, uh, <laughs> there were some things, but the, I watched this the first time that I was going to, uh, I asked, I was like, oh, there are helicopters in this thing. Is there air on the phone? Is look there like air on ha- Cybertron? But there has to be, because you can't have a helicopter without an atmosphere. <laughs> It just wouldn't work. Also, duh, you can't have sound without an atmosphere. So there's some kind of atmosphere on this planet. So there's some oh, kind of atmosphere on there's, Cybertron. There's in this movie. There's atmosphere then all over outer space because they're talking. I in guess outer space. They true. kick they kick Megatron out the door while they're flying through space. I guess that's true. Uh, we kind of gotta. That's like how. That's why you know Star Wars like flying around like, and not to get way too far afield but that's one thing i really liked about firefly was that they in any of the shots in space they were silent i, I liked battle super Galact- nerds you're yeah, welcome that's why i liked Battlestar galactica too <laughs> anyway <laughs> <laughs> so okay so uh we're zooming in on the planet it appears as we've been discussing you have features not unlike cybertron you've got mechanical terrain you've got rocky terrain futuristic architecture um, so I looked up a little bit about Lythone, uh, on Wikipedia mm. and, oh, did you guys do no, as well? I, oh. I definitely did. Did you guys do any research? Not really. Okay. Listen, I looked up <laughs> right. the composer. No, I found nice, that rocky. Nice job. God. Okay. All right. All right. You did your part. Caleb, uh, once again has failed. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I hope every episode we have the berate Caleb corner. <laughs> Hmm. I'll just take two, 30 seconds where we just say whatever the fuck we want. <laughs> you <to> piece of shit! <laughs> but, um, so, uh, apparently, uh, ori- in the original versions of the script, uh, this was a planet of marble, and the creatures, the Lithonians, were going to be made of living rock. And oh. I don't know why they changed direction. Oh. I'm glad they changed direction. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Um... But um, still, no idea. There's not. I couldn't really get much of a background on if this uh, society, this civilization, is related to the Transformers. Is it a satellite civilization? I mean, they're definitely robots of some um, sort. Yeah, that's weird because, like, I guess. I mean, I actually have done some research about like the the idea of having uh, non carbon based life forms, like life forms based on silicon, but silicon. Silicon, yeah. Uh, it's very difficult. Like, it's not, car- it doesn't bind as well to other things as carbon does, but I guess in this idea, I guess maybe, I don't know, in this, maybe it's, no, it can't be a different galaxy. It's gotta be the same galaxy. So I guess this is just. Why can't it be a different galaxy? That seems a long way to go. Yeah. I mean, they go to Earth on a, I guess they have to travel faster than light. So I guess, still, a galaxy's pretty big. It is really big. Uh, I mean, Star Trek good. never even goes out of the galaxy. I would say this. I mean, based on looking at their animations of these people, or how they animate. Robots. <laughs> they're robots, but they're, they, they, they make a point to make these people look very peaceful, an advanced civilization. Sure. Um, you know, that guy happy. only has three fingers. Yes, he does. <laughs> the other one has four. And uh, that's a uh, fifty. Is that fifty nine seconds in? Yeah, fifty nine uh, yeah. seconds in. But Look at the three fingered freak. Yeah. Oh, what happened? They deserve to die. Then I was about <laughs> yeah. to say. I was about to say. You know, they they made it. Uh, they went out of their way to show these people are p- peaceful, mm-hmm. pacified, advanced civilization that don't deserve to die. But here comes shopping mall. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah the escalator. So yeah. in the final seconds, yeah, we get this glimpse. Of the occupants, the Lithonians, they appear to, they're mechanically based. They're holding children. They have a peaceful oh, existence. That's another thing. Their world like, is not war torn, like compared yeah. to Cybertron. They like have you saw families. Before. I feel How terrible. does it work? God. They have babies. How does that work? Uh, they appear to have male and female yeah. genders. Yes. Uh, and yeah. They have children. The women are pink and the men are blue. And <laughs> uh, sexist. Well, a little bit I learned from the Transformers wiki. I'm glad that exists because I will be referring to it a lot throughout this adventure. 
Uh, the Lothonians are highly emotional. They're not revengeful. They're capable of interstellar travel. And uh, another interesting tidbit is that the models, the Lothonian models, were used in later episodes of the Transformers as uh, junkions. They were just recycled and became junkions really? later in, oh. the, in the cartoon oh. series. Were they used? Uh, were they used as junkions later on in the movie here? But were just uh, I think uh, the, the, what I read was just referring to the television show. So uh, the only thing I see, but the difference between these and the junkions is the junkions have have like the Fu Manchus. Here we are at the shopping mall. Dark forces are upon. They have no I love, clue what's closing in on. Yeah, them. and that's another like I, I can't remember if I said this on this episode or not, but like the glowing, like everything glows. Like there's these like little bits in every scene where there's glowing stuff, like. I like that a lot. Like I don't know. It's just it's so it, it's really pretty. How do you how do you make how do you make something look like it's glowing light in animation? I've actually looked this up. It's been a long time. The way I understand it is, I believe at this point it was uh, like those parts are cut out and the cell is lit from underneath. Oh wow! I think yeah. So, and then they snap the shot. Yeah, that sounds really so, tedious. So it's real light, and they got to get the right color too. Mm -hmm. And if you notice in the cartoon, that's why a lot of times they'll be off a little bit sometimes. Like the, uh -huh. the glow. Uh, they it, are cutting it out of the film. Is someone, out of the cell. Out, out of the, the animation cell. cell. Or they're just leaving it clear. Right. They're just leaving uh, it clear. I it's guess not cut sense. out. Yeah, I guess okay. that makes sense. I mean, but also, Woo. like. I mean the set, like the the parts that are moving is the only cell. Like the back painting, that's not even. I mean, there's separate parts. Yeah. Like yeah. so. As an audio medium listener, it's hard to understand <laughs> what we're talking about. But again, we're going to assume that you have seen the movie and have some and knowledge. I of would animation. recommend. I would recommend just having it up on you know your device. And while we'll we're try. Talking, the, obviously. Yeah, we'll try. I guess to make like mi mo like second markers. Right now, we're just looking at the 59 second mark of the movie. Uh, in the shopping center, and the poor man with three fingers. Oh no, we've moved. No, we can't move into no. the second sorry. minute yet. Oh, we got to wrap sorry, up sorry, the episode. Sorry, 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 no, no, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. I mean, we can talk about some other things. But let we, me ask we, you guys a question: minute. Do yeah. you think the robot at is uh, sexy? At yes. is, is, is sexy. Would you? Would you bang? Oh God! Would you? <laughs> I mean, I like sex. Would you bang anything. the robot at uh, 59 seconds? Check her out. She's got the hips, the legs. She does have some nice hips. She looks like she's probably a runway model on this planet. It's going to hurt your dick. <laughs> she's yeah. not going to be moist. It's all hard. Okay. Oh, oh, angular. See, see, what, what, see, what see the Pandora's box of you over here. <laughs> Look at, There's but, not, they've got yeah. lube, obviously. I guess they do have lube. That's true. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, uh, Mama mia. Put it in my tailpipe. Okay. And on that note, okay, we've Closed out the episode from, <laughs> from from the DEC logo to the Lithonian Shopping Mall. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe. You can email us at apoddecast at gmail.com. Our Twitter is at apoddecast. Facebook, we're Autopod Decepticast. And Instagram, apoddecast. And of course, you can link to all our social media through our website, autopoddecepticast.com. And uh, please enjoy the show. Tell your friends about it. We'd appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Thanks, guys.